Thank you for listening to the Mental Health Survival Guide on North Volume Network. Welcome again to the Mental Health Survival Guide. My name is Nick, and I actually have a friend of mine in here today, and his name is Justin. Say hi, Justin. Hi. Now, today we're going to talk a little bit about something that was brought up to me by some person who happens to listen to the show, so thanks for listening to the show. But before we do, I just want to remind people that they can find the North Volume Media app on the iOS store and the Google Play store, and it's a great way to listen to podcasts like these and local streaming music. Have you used the podcast? Have you used the uh, app before? No, because this is where I was going to chime in, is because yeah. I don't really do, you know, podcast apps. No, but it's also on the internet. Yes, you in can general. just go to northvolume.com. So nice, nice, it's and everywhere. listen to these great shows. Right. Perfect. Well, all right. So a lot of you who listen to the show have reached out to me to let me know what you think, and I'm going to definitely say thank you about that. But I ran into one of our listeners this summer, and he was telling me about how he struggles with depression and anxiety, and this makes time management very hard for him. This put me on a path of thought, and I realized time management is also something that I definitely struggle with. Um, And to be honest, I was a lot worse at it than I am now. I'm a little more together now because all these wonderful, groovy mental health experiences that I'm going through. Um, But I thought, hey, let's, let's talk a little bit about time management because people... This doesn't just affect people with mental health issues. This affects every single person. So I was having a nonchalant kind of text message with my friend Justin here, and I asked him if he wanted to join me on this show just to add a little spice and variety. So so Justin, thanks. And before we get into this, I need you to tell me, what's your favorite color? I don't have one. Not one ever. I mean, it changes. It's like, you know... Whatever yeah. shirt I'm wearing, I guess. Yeah. So right now your favorite color is gray. Correct. That's a good color. It's a great color. Yeah. My favorite color, depending on my shirt, is is a lava scene from Hawaii. Perfect. So that is a color, actually. I saw that at uh, Home Depot when I was painting my living room. La- lava, lava scene. scene. <laughs> yeah. It's a new trend, whatever. <laughs> that, that totally works. But but time management, Justin. Do you do you find yourself running into issues with time management ever? <laughs> Never. No. No, that's not true at all. Uh, so yeah, time management is an issue for me as well. I struggle with focusing, and I struggle with anxiety, and a whole host of whatever else can get in the way of managing my time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I've done a really good job coping with it, and I definitely have people ask me often how I do as much as I do, and I think probably in a similar situation for yourself. Yeah, you know, with board involvements and businesses and kids and everything, you know, how do you do it? And they would, you know, I go back to that old saying: if you ever want to find out how to have more time to do things, ask the busiest person you know. That's right? true, yeah. So I've... And then they're going to tell you about how, you know, what to, not to do. <laughs> right. And that's really, I think that's what it is, though, is recognizing what you really suck at and don't do that. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the key I, life. Well, I mean, that's the key. That's actually the biggest part of advice givers. A lot of advice givers who give great advice are people who don't actually follow that advice very well. Well, and what I mean by don't do it is figure out ways kind of around the problem rather than like looking at, okay, I suck at time management and I'm never going to get all these projects done. How do I get better at time management? Maybe the way to look at time management is I have the wrong kind of projects on my plate. Right. I'm saying yes way too often to things and putting myself in a position where it's unmanageable. Yep. You know what I mean? So that's what I mean by don't do it is like, Learn to say no is, is like step one and clean out the, the fluff of it's, my schedule. It, it's definitely step one, and it's also like step five, right. and step six, right. and step seven. Um, so let me share a little bit. Uh, let me put this in a little bit of context, and, and then you can share a little bit of where time management works in your life context-wise. Um, so mine definitely, I'm going to have to just say that it deals a lot with my behavior, and a lot, and a lot also with my self worth, and a lot of a lot my image of myself, and also this these uh, concepts that I feel like I have to put up with, or at least try to maintain at all times, which are of course ridiculous most of the time. Um, so 
So, but a pattern, there is a pattern that I fall into, and that is I struggle with bipolar. And with bipolar, my chemicals are constantly in flux, and I'm constantly dealing with, um, you know, waking up one morning and being like, oh my God, this is the greatest day of my life, or waking up and not being able to even get out of bed without causing major anxiety, major stress, and major pain. Can I ask you something about yeah, that? Yeah, please. So one thing that's, that's helped me, you know, and this is a Buddhist thing, is just radical acceptance. And I've found that when I'm having days like that where I just don't want to do anything, uh, luckily I'm in a position where I own a business and I can kind of get away with certain yeah. things. But just accepting the fact that I know today is going to be a hard day for me to get what I need to get done done. Yeah. And just accepting that and not trying to fight it and then trying to just cram all the stuff yeah. in there on top of it. That would be like step 1.2, I feel well, like. Well, well, that's actually, that's definitely part of the solution. Right. I, I, I think. But but my actual problem is, and, and me being able to talk about this today definitely shows that I've come to at least some terms of acceptance. And what I what I mean is, is depression doesn't just make me feel bummed out. It doesn't just make me want to sleep. It actually causes physical manifestations. It, my bones feel like they're made of iron and my my joints hurt and my stomach hurts and anxiety when it kicks in um it it can literally control every aspect of my life but with the expectations that i put on my plate i'm often put myself into uh situations where i'm forcing myself through the anxiety through the depression now i don't necessarily know if that's always good or always bad i kind of feel like it, it's it's like a middle road here because the outcomes are often good but if i could avoid feeling terrible about what i'm doing i would do that i would do that but i but i just i just don't necessarily know what it's like i also know my cycles now better than I knew before. I also know that certain influences in my life, like alcohol and sugar and just uh, exercise and diet and sleep, if I'm lacking or overtaking in any of those things, I will, it'll, it'll throw me a little out of whack. And so my problem is <laughs> I love being manic. I'm, I'm, even though there's a lot of people out there who really struggle with being manic, um, I definitely have utilized the power of being manic. But the problem with my being manic is, one, I am I know I'm manic, but it feels like I'm on drugs, and these are amazing drugs. And if you were to ask me to build you a house when I'm at my peak, I'm going to say, yeah, totally. I could totally do that. I could just do it tomorrow, whatever you need. I, I'll just, I'm going to go cut down some trees right now. Yep. And that's how I feel. And And if I ever let myself go about that, I could probably accomplish amazing things. But for every two or three days that I'm actually manic, I have weeks of depression and anxiety that I have to um, deal with. And so, but what happens is, is a lot of times I will make plans or I'll agree to do something when I'm manic or at least feeling really good about myself and really good about my life. And I forget to ask myself one key question. Would depressed Nick be okay with this? Huh? Because the answer, the answer is not always no. But but there's a good majority there, of the time when right. you probably should have talked to depressed Nick first. Exactly. <laughs> and and depressed Nick is a very big part of my my life, and I actually embrace those feelings because n- not only when I'm depressed do I feel more intensely, but I also pay attention to more detail. And my anxiety is also a big, huge part of me. Um, but I did have a time in my life where I did need to take medication to kind of regulate myself. And now I'm working all right on diet and exercise and stuff, but I, I still go to, you know, the doctor when I need help. So let me just express my version right. of that. Um, I've struggled with, you know, the symptoms of PTSD for a long time. Yeah. Um, really come w- leaps and bounds, you know, from when I first kind of became aware of it. Right. Um, but what's interesting is, you know, I'll have similar triggers that will happen in my life and maybe I'll get depressed or anxious or completely dissociated um, and how that affects my time management right. and affects my my yes or no judgment. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's depending on what 
the particular trigger was or, or who asked it or what my emotions were kind of tied to that, um, yeah, I find myself, or I used to find myself, I should say, agreeing to way much more of like the same thing. I'm going to get you on a yeah. house. Like I'm going to build it tomorrow. I'm going to go get some lumber. We're going to get some nails. It's going to be yeah. great. It's going to be finished. Done. Yep. And really, you know, it's a total side topic, but getting those those kind of triggers or symptoms for me under control was definitely step 1.3, I sure. think we're on. <laughs> yeah. Of yeah. time management. Yeah. You know, and then when we actually get to the core of time management, there's a whole host of things that I actually, uh, and for a background for the listeners that aren't aware, you know, I own two businesses. Mm-hmm. I have two kids. Um, I serve on boards and do a well, one less board now. We won't <laughs> right. talk about that. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. So time management is really important for me to accomplish what I've accomplished. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's there's a whole host of things and acknowledging that I'm not good at time management has made me really good at time management because then I can yeah. bring in a lot of other people's skills or tools and different widgets, if you will, that just help me make time right. management a non-issue. Right. Uh, you say that. You say that. But I, I'm i going to call you out on this a little bit, and That's I'm just right. going to stay. No, I'm just going to state this. We might know better ways to deal with our, our activators, our triggers, and, and to into process, but time management, or at least these responsibilities, or this saying yes to things, is still something that we kind of struggle with a little no bit. No doubt. That'll be a right. lifelong struggle. Right. I'm just so, saying that when I say I've figured out ways, I am continuing to figure out ways to better improve my time management yeah. based on the current symptoms of the day, time. Yeah, because, I mean, if you <laughs> yeah. fa- if you had it figured out, then, I, I mean, that's all there. But yeah, my job. Uh, your, your heart, you have a huge heart. You, I've never seen somebody, you know, bring an issue up to you where your answer wasn't, okay, well, let's help you out this way. So because you're a doer and because you're so kind-hearted, you're going to run into this problem of overbooking yourself pretty constantly. Yeah. And you're a busy guy. I, I'm a busy guy too. We're busy in completely different ways sometimes, but mm-hmm. also we have a lot of ways that we kind of mesh. Yep. So, Like on podcasts. Like on podcasts, but also like being a dad. You know, uh, thing. prioritizing the time with our children. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a huge issue because when I don't go help a friend of mine move, I feel bad about it for like a minute. Yep. <laughs> but if I don't spend a minute that I could have spent with my kids, I feel bad about that forever. Hmm. It's, it's just, it, it grinds at me. Yeah. So I have made several attempts over the past years, unbeknownst to me that I was really working on time management. I just was calling it like being a better dad. Well, yeah. So like, I mean, when you really think, I think my dad was a great example of how to manage time because I mean, he was pretty much had the same career. I mean, he was a father and, and yeah. the same business I owned, right? Um, and he and he nailed it. And I never really thought about it until you just said it. But like one way for time management, like how do I spend time with my kids and do something I enjoy and spend time with my friends? You know, like he would like coach our teams. Yeah. Which seems like a bigger headache for somebody yeah. who owns a business. But now I'm with my kids. I'm watching them practice. I'm accomplishing this. I'm also marketing my business because yeah. I'm getting involved with the community. You know, and that's that's kind of why I got involved with the strand, right? It really matched up with all of my interest and all of my obligations yeah. to, as a father, it and was as a business owner, and a community. Correct. Yeah. So now I'm going to get involved with the strand. It's going to help my children and get them more involved. It's going to help my business and get that more involved in some way. And just you know, yeah. It, so it's not all completely selfless, but it's it's also doing exactly what I want to do in a way that meets all of those things. Well, you know, and we could have a discussion another time. I don't believe in selflessness. I don't I believe don't in either. It. It's altruism. That's I don't such believe a exists. Great, but Oh, that is so true. And and but I mean that's an opinion on my end. It's not necessarily well, fact. It's I, a fact because I, I probably, it's my I, opinion, so it is true. <laughs> I can uh, back it up. But what what I what I want to talk about a little bit today is just that dichotomy of of the stuff you know you're supposed to do and the stuff that is very difficult to do. There's stuff that is easy on paper. Like time management, if you think of all the things that you need to do and you just throw it up on a calendar, yeah, it seems easy, easy yeah. right? But for me, someone who is very, who tries, I'm sorry, not someone who is, but who tries to be very aware of my emotional state and also my ability state, 
when I wake up one morning, it's different than another morning. Yeah. And it, no matter how many things I have well, scheduled who, out. Who knows what else you know gets thrown on the schedule. And yeah, it, it life happens. There's a whole kink in the, in, the, in the entire schedule. You get this beautiful whiteboard and calendar planned, right? So if, if I may, yeah, kind of the Please way do. that I tackle a very busy schedule um, is first by, by writing everything out, if yeah. I can. And quite frankly, I don't do that that often. That's one of those pieces of advice. I only do that when I'm really buried. Sure. I've got my calendar, but when I've really got like a lot of tasks, I have to write it out. Right. So I write it out, and then I prioritize. I'll put a number next to it. And then study after study has shown this, and I'm, I believe this. I'm curious if you do. Sure. That we cannot multitask, period. It's, it's almost impossible. Mm. You're not really multitasking when you're multitasking. Mm. You're just going back and forth. Maybe yeah. in millisecond increments yeah. between two different things, but you can't multitask. So when I'm really inundated... Mm. I really make sure that I'm just focused on one task at a time because that's all you really can do. And I find that really helps simplify things a lot. Yeah, and, and, and I agree with you. I agree with the sentiment. But I find it to be a little problematic only because... Because and, I play piano and talk at the same time? No, because normally when I'm doing something, I'm doing like 10 other things. And I kind of take the meet Joe Black approach, you know, where... Where Anthony Hopkins asks Brad Pitt's character, you know, how could you be here if other people are are dying? And you know, and he, he explains that basically, when you were shaving this morning, you were also thinking about all these other things. And I really believe a lot of dedication of my life is is constantly keeping several irons in the fire at one time. And yes, I agree with you that you you can only like truly focus on one thing at a time, but the amount of time that I can focus on something is really small. Yeah, so I need to have several different things to go all over. So to, you got to go upset back that. But, and I do the same thing. Obviously, I quote unquote multitask. Right. Um, but it's not... No, no, I, I, I agree with what you said, and, and what you said is not wrong. It's, it's, it, or, I ever say is wrong. No, no, <laughs> um, but, but <laughs> what I'm saying is, is, is for clarity in my OCD brain, I kind of... <clears> I, it doesn't help me to think of that way because a part of my life was spending a lot of time trying to figure out how to focus on one thing. And meditation mm -hmm. is very important for me, but th that's a time where focusing on maybe two or three things is my one thing. Mm -hmm. And that's just how that's just how I cope. Right. But I have, I actually, you brought up your, your list thing, so I, I would like to share with you my list uh, thing that I do, which... I've been told is really insane, but it really works. It works for me, and I do it. And my 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 staff, my my wife, uh, uh, everyone just doesn't understand how it works. But in my mind, it works. So I want to share it with you. I want to share it with the listeners. Um, I call it my my listomania. That's what I call it. I saw that highlighted on your notes, right? And I'm just curious about that. It sounds like an app. <laughs> no, it's well, well it it's might be an app. app. It might be it's an a app. widget in your brain. Continue. But, but basically, what I do is uh, I can be evil. I can easily be overwhelmed by so many things. So what I try to do is I try to evaluate the importance of most things. Um, but it's hard for me to evaluate how important something is in, until it's right in front of me. So once a month, <laughs> once a month, I look, I look at the month ahead and I list out all the things that are coming, like big events or meetings that I have to go to or responsibilities that I have to maintain during that month that I know about. I make a list. And that's like my big key list, my monthly list. And then every week on a Monday morning... <laughs> I list out the things that need to be done that week that I that I know about, and you can I can always add or subtract things to that list at any time. And you do this with discipline, like you do this every Monday and once a month, pretty much. Uh, if I don't do it on a Monday, I'll do it on a Tuesday. But you, you do it at least weekly and monthly. Yes, and 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 it, and the reason is because it actually really it's a peaceful moment for me. But to be fair, it's not like. I'm sitting and spending an hour and a half writing out a list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes about maybe three minutes. Right. And but I feel better. And so what happens is, and then so then during the week, so during the week on Monday, I make my week list. I pull topics from the month list and I put it on the week list if it applies. And then every single morning, <laughs> I make a list about what needs to be done that day. And Sometimes it's a list on my phone. Sometimes it's just a chicken scratch on my desk. And I only do this from Monday through Friday. 
And the reasons are because Saturday and Sunday are dedicated to usually either big events where it just it's beyond me, or I try to spend time with my family. But that's for me. Mm-hmm. Now, this list thing seems simple and, and easy. However, it's, it plays on my reward system. My reward system is I'm the kind of guy who wants to get everything done that he needs to do done as soon as possible so that I can have the freedom to get in trouble by saying yes to other things that I'm going to do. <laughs> Can I, can yeah, I please do. give some thoughts on that? One, I'm the exact opposite. I'm the biggest procrastinator in the world. And I just... Oh, yeah. I mean, no, don't get me wrong. But I'm, I don't I'm even a have procrastinator. That inkling, I don't even have that inkling to get things done as soon as possible so I can have free time because I don't even know what that means. Oh, I, I just don't... I just do it... I'm not doing this for free time. Right. I'm doing this for you can wallow time, time <laughs> to, so that I can dedicate it towards bigger things. But I, I literally just can't bring myself to have any kind of weekly discipline like that. Right. At all, ever. Right. So the, my version of that is I use Google Calendar for everything. Like if I if I need to tie my shoes at 2 o'clock, yeah. if, if it's not on my calendar, it's probably never going to get done. So even if I'm just talking to somebody and they want me to think about something, I'll actually put on my calendar, think about this. Yeah. And I live on it and my so, employees So that's what that. I used to do. And actually my whole staff, my whole – the program, everything we do is actually run with Google Calendar. Yep. Google Calendar is a great app. But – what I found was scheduling time in a day to do something was unrealistic for me yeah. after a while because there were times where I was just like, it was at 11 o'clock, I'm supposed to be doing this one thing. I don't feel like doing it. And then I would either feel guilty or I would reschedule that thing 13 or 14 times. Can I show you how I do it? Because I don't schedule any hard times for anything. You just put it all in? Sort of. So if it needs to have a hard time, yeah, uh, it goes on there. And then writing the word done by everything I've completed really makes me happy. See, and when you get done and there's like 15 tasks and it has done next to all of them or an angry face with these emojis now, <laughs> yeah. it's just great. But you know what, though? You say that you don't have that dedication to make a list, but that's what that is no, right I there. No, I pay Nick to make that list for me. Okay. <laughs> and well, then I'll just add a couple things, and then he gets angry at me for adding things. Well, so I'm lucky yeah, in that situation. But that's still that same dedication right. because you are taking the responsibility. And the reason I do the list is because <clears throat> it's a little bit of normalcy that I, I can apply, and it's something that manic Nick and depressed Nick and high anxiety Nick can do. Now, when it gets to Friday though, it can get a little crazy <laughs> because mm-hmm. sometimes there are things on my daily list that just doesn't get doesn't get done, so it moves to the following day. And then Friday is usually the day staff and also friends or family know just to kind of just leave me alone in the morning on Friday because I just have so much that I just want to try to get done. Um, but this was this was years and years of me trying to find this one fit mm. because I do accomplish a lot of pretty timely things, but it, it's but I do spend a lot of time also being um, anxious and being depressed and what and putting something down on a list though and having this ability to either cross it off my list or at least know that this is something I need to do that day it makes me feel purpose. Mm-hmm. So when I'm manic <laughs> and and I have these things done, I know, okay, this is my list and I got to just do this list. And the other stuff can be just fun or it can be interest stuff. But when I'm depressed, I give myself that little bit of relief by going, oh, it just feels so good to cross something off my list. So I like this because I've never really thought about what I do sure. from this perspective. Yeah. And what's interesting, I guess, is I, I guess I am disciplined in the fact that I will put things on my calendar right and try to move them ahead if they don't get done yeah I guess one negative side effect of it would be that if I look like to the week ahead like somebody wants to make plans and I see that I've got a full week coming already that can really stress me out yeah and that gets me crazy anxious yep about the future yep so that's one downside to it and then that'll shut me down from accomplishing the stuff that's in front of me today because I am so focused on getting so much more done this week so I can have more time next week to do not have any more time. Nope. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. And you know I mean? that does, that is real. That is very okay. real. Actually, it brings me to my next point. Let's go. And that is you got to kind of be, you got to be real and you got to be true to yourself. Yep. And you got to forgive yourself for, you know, not being Superman. Acceptance. And yeah, like massive acceptance. Yeah. But... Acceptance is different than excuses. 
Truth. When there's stuff that I don't want to do, sometimes I will I will find myself stressing myself out about that when really it's not that stressful. Mm-hmm. I just need to buckle down and actually get it done. Right. And it feels great. So that's why I put those on the monthly list. And then at the end of the month, I got to get it done. But at least, you know, I, I, I know how I feel about certain things. Like I, like, I like doing reports. I like doing paperwork. I like doing research. I love doing that kind of stuff. But what I don't like doing is reports, research, or paperwork for stuff that is time sensitive and someone else is expecting it. Yeah, so I have a a lot of paperwork that needs to get done, and I hate it so much. I love doing reports, and I love seeing bar graphs. Yeah, I hate it when people that are selling me stuff show me bar graphs, but I love making my own bar graphs when I'm trying to sell myself on how good of a job I'm doing. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's a great sales tool. (laughs) Don't use it on me. Um, Right. So, yeah, one thing, again, in in the, the spirit of time management that's really helped with that is simplifying as many of those things as possible. Absolutely. I know it's an indirect thing, but... You know, I have all of my office work is automated. I can reach it from anywhere on the cloud, from yep. any computer. I can do it while I'm going to the bathroom on my phone. Right. You know, so that's helped a so lot. Part of, so part of the making list thing that I've adapted to my making list habit is I ask myself this question, do I really need to do that? Can I delegate it? Delegation's a big deal. Have you read The 48 Laws of Power? Um I'm aware of them. It's a really douchey book. Okay. So it was weird because I went from reading uh, The Heart of Buddhist Teaching to The 48 Laws of Power, and okay. I felt like there was this epic battle. That's a of, dichotomy right there. It was there. the ultimate yeah. dichotomy. And I, I, honestly, I couldn't even finish The 48 Laws of Power because I was just like, I get what you're saying, and true, if you want to be Trump, like this is a great thing to do. Um, right. But I don't, and I kind of like people. <laughs> uh, but one of their rules and uh, or laws, if you will, is really if you don't have to do it yourself, don't. Right. I like a more balanced approach to that. Right. Because they're very extreme about it. Sure. Of like literally don't do anything you can get somebody else to do. Yeah. And I think they're even referring to like raising children. Uh, sure. But delegation's a big, big deal. Right. You know, so I, I when I was at my kids. when I was at my worst uh, at a job I hated, I decided my, my mom trying to make me feel better bought me a book. And this book was the eight hour work week. Uh, I've seen this book. <laughs> and so and I read it and of course it made me it made it made me feel a little uh, terrible about having to work more than eight hours. <laughs> right. Um, but that's but the American dream. Exactly. And but a big part of that was whole was the whole like if if you don't have to do it, pay someone else to do it. And if you can't afford to pay them to do it, then have them do it for free. Right. When okay. But the way I live my life though is I often end up doing things that no one else either feels like doing or no one else is necessarily capable of doing. Which is both a, a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, it that's is. part of the reason I think that we're really happy with the paths we're on and we're sure. doing what we do. Yeah. Uh, but it also sucks because then we have to do a whole bunch of stuff because because we know that I'm just going to end up doing it if nobody right. does. And I have been completely fever ridden, can't get out of bed, and then gone, okay, I got to go. Right. I got to go instruct a course. Right. And I'll go. And I should not be doing that. Yeah. It's a biohazard to everyone around me. But I just I, I just have this work ethic, yep. which I'm not sure is necessarily healthy or not. Um, but on the be real and true part about this, asking myself if I really need to do this, if someone else could do it, and also well, what would happen if it didn't get done? And, and how would I deal with it if it didn't get done? You are Just, so much more mindful about your time management than I am. I I'm also say. probably a bit more crazier than you are. That might be the case. But it's still some form of mindfulness, be it I've, good mindfulness. And I've or also bad. thought, and I've also thought on this topic for a few months. So, right. like, and because I'm, I I'm talking, I'm talking about things that I do that I didn't realize were related to time management, but mm. really are. So another thing that I kind of think that we need to do or can really help with time management is I actually I hear my mom's voice, and that is you know just to prepare for tomorrow and just, but that doesn't mean like you know. I see a lot of people, especially a lot of fitness gurus, who are always like, Sunday's meal prep day. You prep all your meals and blah, 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 blah. And I mean, that's... Whoa, whoa, whoa. That accent you just gave, what'd you call them? Gurus? Gym gurus? Gym gurus, yeah. I'm actually doing one guy in my... Okay. Yeah. So that's just to be clear for our listeners, yeah. your listeners, really, not mine. 
uh, that wasn't a stab at any of them. Oh, no, absolutely not. Just no. one in particular. And I'm actually really, I really love the dedication yeah. of, of like Talk gym gurus time and stuff. I don't know how the hell they do that. Right. I mean, you that know. I don't get. To work a full-time job and also go to the gym for four hours each day. Although for what it's worth for people that would like to get more exercise but can't find the time to do it, mm -hmm. I did actually find a solution for that in November, um, and that was 300 push-ups a day. So just throwing that out there. <laughs> I lost forty pounds, and uh, and you can do that anytime. Yeah, you can do it anywhere. I'm actually working. I'm actually on, doing. I'm, not, I'm right working now. on the junior version of that, and that's three push-ups a day. <laughs> so right. I'm well, hoping gotta, by the end of the year to be up to three. So and it's scheduling wise, that's doable. Sure, sure. Right, because then you you know you do like five. Because you wake up, that's and, one. <laughs> sure. Right. <laughs> you fall down and then get back up. That's two. You know. Sure. Yeah. I, I, no, I. I would love to think that there would be a part in my life where I was doing 300 push-ups a day, but it's just it's just not it's not in my you know wheelhouse right now. But maybe maybe it is in the future. Yeah. Maybe you could put it on next month's calendar. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. That was a hard no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm shooting daggers through my eyes a, right a, now. On a tantrum. Um, <laughs> no, it's okay. So the preparing for tomorrow that I want to talk about is before you go to bed, before you... With me, I have to unwind. I can't... I'm not the type of person that can just go to sleep. I have to either re get reading a book, put a movie on, or, you know, watch a couple dozen hours of YouTube videos or something. And that, that just really unwinds me. And But before I do any of that, I just make an attempt to just do something for tomorrow, whether it is whether it is preparing my meal for the next day. And that consciously, you're actually conscious about this. At the, at, at the end of the day. It's the end of the day. You actually say to myself, self, do something for tomorrow. But it's because I... I, I really know what works for me. And what really works for me is my reward system. I'm an addict. Um, I, I don't drink alcohol anymore because I realized I was using it for coping and, and, uh, and terrible things. I, I don't do drugs uh, or anything I consider drugs. I don't smoke cigarettes. And I, I really pay attention to trying to eat well. So my reward system as an adult is really... <laughs> goofy things and some of sometimes it's just hanging out and playing a video game for like 15 minutes and i'll do that at night when everything is done but before i can do that i need to accomplish one thing for the next day hmm. and sometimes it's just picking making sure i have socks for the next day That's sometimes it's as simple socks yeah. slow me down every morning right God. yeah so it's not rocket science or actually it might be rocket science but i'm not a rocket scientist but I will say that being aware of my ability to con myself into not managing my time correctly. Being aware of my ability to not con myself into not to, managing my to time. To con correctly. myself. Meaning what I'll what I'll do is I'll I'll know what I'm supposed to do, but I'll come up with reasons to not do oh, it. Yeah. Or I'll stress myself out on something that's not really Successful that stressful. Successful procrastination Absolutely. is completely dependent upon being able to come up with really good reasons to not do something. Right. Right. Which is all, it's all excuses. Right. It's all crap. Right. Um, and, and, right. Because you can just do it or not do it. There's consequences for doing something and putting this off, but you know, you just got to do it. Exactly. I'm pretty sure there's a sports company that has like a slogan or something. I like wouldn't that. know. I know I nothing know. about sports. Um, but what I do know is I know that there are things that are extremely important to me, and that is my need for sleep helps me be a better dad. My, my need for eating well helps me to be a better dad, a better partner, helps me work a lot more efficiently. So taking care of myself, which um, though part of my life, I definitely felt like taking care of myself was a selfish ac aspect yeah. that we need to that's avoid. I used to struggle with hard. And so I... Would you say that's an attachment to shame? Sure. Okay. Sure. Or, or just poor self-worth. But yeah. hey, I mean, and, and there are a million and one reasons. My parents are awesome. My parents are amazing people. Um, I was I was raised. I had everything I really ever wanted or needed. And I also worked really hard. And my, my parents instilled in me a lot of values. I still came out an adult who, you know, struggles with major insecurities and also feels um, stress doesn't deal with stress very well. So hmm. Now that I'm in my late 30s, I'm trying really hard to 
37. Oh man, um, you knew what I was thinking about too. You I'm about trying. I'm trying really <laughs> hard to take care of myself, and it might be for silly reasons or reasons. I mean, you should always take care of yourself because you should love yourself. Blah, that's, that's crap to me. But I should take care of myself because my my wife deserves yeah. a, a good partner. And my kids deserve a good well, yeah, dad. Because you can't take care of anybody else until you take care of yourself. I mean, it's all yeah. foundational. Yeah, Thich stuff. Nahan, you know, says you can't you can't fill a cup from an empty vessel, and I mean that that really resonates with me. <laughs> so on the subject of time management, I I have these things that I just want to run by. They're headlines about time management, and I just need you to tell me if you think that they are good or crap. Okay. Work smarter, not harder. I mean, what a duh, I guess, but okay. Right. You know, very nondescript. Um, whoa, 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 wait, that one's crap. Right, okay. Because you can't work, like, if you're not working as smart as you can, or at least trying to, you're <laughs> ignorant, so how can you be even conscious of the fact that you could be doing something smarter? So I think the, I think the concept means, or at least it, I interpret it to mean that, like, Instead of working hard on a task, spend a few moments right. and try to think it through. I do know what that means. I mean, like, so I move big safes. Right. Right? And I hired this one guy, and he would put his back into it, and he'd think he's this big, tough guy. And it's like, dude, that thing weighs 2,000 pounds. I don't care how big you are. Right. Doing that just is dumb. Let's just not do that and work smarter, not harder. Right, because... So I agree with it, and I disagree with it. How about that? <laughs> Learn to say no. Yep. Yeah, yep. and that that's good. Huge. But the the key word that I always kind of hang on to the whole is the whole learn because that's that seems to sum things up really hard because the behavioral stance of of saying no constantly. It, I mean, you say yes because it it, it helps you with your self worth. Yeah, right, right. Maybe you're you're saying yes because you feel obligated to the other person. You know what really helped me with saying no, uh, besides the dare campaign. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> All right, I'm done. <laughs> no, uh, the book uh, Getting More by Stuart Diamond. It's a book on negotiations. Getting More, okay. Right. You can't win in a negotiation, winning being defined as getting what you want, right. unless you know what you want. You can't say no or yes, really, to anything, especially time management, if you don't know what you want and value in the first place. So that book really actually helped me with time management. Okay, what's the name of the book again? Getting More by Stuart Diamond. He's a Warren okay. professor on negotiations. Cool. I'm going to look it up. Genius. Um, get an early start. Yep. You I believe do that? that? I wake I up too. crazy early. Yeah. I, I always actually accomplish so much more when I get to work early in the yep. morning. I even, so a big part of my day, I guess, didn't even realize it until talking about it now, is as I wake up early, you know, maybe 5 a.m., um, and I'll go to work, and I'll get ready as quickly as I can, and I go straight to the office, and then I do jack all for three fucking hours. Yeah, but and that's I just like watch YouTube videos, and it's perfect. Like it doesn't matter. That starts my day off. That's on the right your me foot. time, man. But it's not always, and it's you know. But I just find that just getting up early, and whether it's a productive early or a not productive early, either way, it's going to set the day off on the right direction. That's good. That's so, good. Yeah. It's getting uh, speaking started. of getting up early, uh, sleep seven to eight hours. <laughs> Who does that? Now, if actually to be completely open and honest, if I sleep seven or eight hours, I'm, I'm a, a bear zombie. the next day. So I'm a zombie, not a bear. Because but. I can't. I need. I need about five or six hours. That's yeah. for me. Yeah, four to six for me. Because I can't. I Whereas can't Nick, deal. Yeah, you know, my service manager. He needs eight hours, or he's a bear. Yeah, I have a close friend who needs who who needs eight hours, but he also is the type of person that could just be like, okay, I'm going to sleep now, and then lay down and fall asleep. My wife Lori, she is amazing with her ability that she can just be like, okay, I'm going to bed at any time. I can do that. I can't. I can take a nap. I have to right unwind. Now. Nope. But if I go to bed at like 9 p.m., I will be up at f like at least 4 a.m. Okay. I, my body will not let me sleep more than seven hours. Yeah, I yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. So like Unless if I, I am very sick. <laughs> if I go if I go to yeah me too. Um, if I go to bed early, I will wake up super early, and it just sets things off in yeah. the wrong way. So, um, so here here's another one. Uh, don't allow unimportant details drag you down. It's I kind guess. of the it's kind of like a you know um, I guess it's like the don't sweat the small stuff kind of yeah. saying yeah I struggle with that see I I that's I, good advice but I that's can't not really agree advice you can necessarily follow I that's can't like, agree with that's this like at saying all. don't be anxious 
It's like it's not really I, a choice. My 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 whole brain focuses on small details, and so like little things and like don't sweat the small stuff, all that kind of stuff. I can learn to accept things right. and try to move forward, but they will still drag me down. See, sometimes. we're the opposite in that light, and I found like in my team for work. I need somebody like you to sweat the small stuff. I think it's important. Yeah. Somebody has to. Details are important. I am definitely never going sure. to because I'm a big picture guy and a creative thinker, not a detail organized type of guy. Right. Here's another one. Be conscious of the amount of TV, internet, and game time. Not nah, whatever. Okay, but I, I think for that me. this... And for me, it's really not much of an issue. But I do know a lot of people in my life that do dump a lot of their time into scrolling on Facebook and... But do you think being conscious of how much time you're spending on that's really going to make a difference? Or is it possible that they either don't like the tasks that are in front of them or are completely unhappy with them? Or maybe they just don't have the right things I, to get done, you, or maybe they're over-inundated. You know, I think I, that TV... I think it has a little bit to do with addiction. I think well, it I has a little say, bit to do totally with the reward can be system of the brain. As well. yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, but if but for time management, too... It's really great to be conscious of it, but like... I yeah. Don't know, I think that's kind of... I mean, also, in the, like, to bring it back up, the eight-hour workweek book, it says, never check your email before noon. <laughs> and I'm okay. just like, okay. Uh, um, leave a buffer time between tasks. Uh, I'm not, I, I don't have the mind to be that conscious about like leaving a buffer time. I mean, I have to drive between tasks often, which really helps me. Yeah, But I can definitely. consciously just, you know, I'm going to have more time in between things. Now. Do less. I think that's a smart way to do anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> to be quite literal with that one. That is probably the single most important piece of advice I could give anybody ever <sighs> is to do whatever you're doing, but do it less and just more efficiently, I guess I would say. More efficient. I'd rather, I would actually would rather more efficient. Uh, do I like do, do work less. more efficiently. I'm do gonna get, I'm getting do less <laughs> tattooed on, on my your knuckles. chest <laughs> that, or my knuckles. That works. That That's works. how many letters is that? <laughs> do less. Well, you'd have... Yeah, you'd have, you'd have open fingers left. Yeah, but. I did less with this tattoo. I'm not even <laughs> going to finish the sentence. Do less and less is spelled L-E-S. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, so do something during waiting time. Yeah, I do that My a answer lot. is, yeah. I, That's a big deal to me. Looping I, is one of my most productive times. What do you mean? What? So what is your most productive times? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> when I'm going to the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> Numero two. <laughs> Because so I've got all my apps, I've got all my accounting software. Like if you get an invoice during the day, that's so strange. You can know that it was probably. Well you know, I bathroom. actually had another discussion with someone, <laughs> right? and 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 I guess I'm I'm a weirdo. I don't take my phone in with what to the bathroom. I don't with understand me. how anybody. Well, we're obviously talking about number two here, not just right. the bathroom in general. Oh no, of course. or maybe you don't. Maybe that's a thing. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it, like I mean, I do read. I have I have a book. I have a books. So I'll read the paper. You know um, what else does that? Old people. Yeah, that could be it for me. No, I don't know. I can't. I can't imagine bathroom time without without phone. your phone. Weird. Ever. Uh, maybe it's something I should start doing. No, nah, no, well, maybe. Um. All right. Uh. Another is. Uh. Create an organizing system. Yep. Even if it's unorganized and not picture perfect, I am. You know, I've got such a crazy schedule. Having that calendar that I can just look at and remind me and, you know, notifications, it helps. Um, commit to accomplishing something. Whatever. Yeah, I, I kind of don't know exactly. I, I mean, know. like, yes. I mean, I don't see how that helps time management. I think that I think you're smarter and clearly more mindful if you commit to something, realize it's dumb and quickly uncommit if right. possible. I mean, I'm not going to hurt other people. Like if I told you I was going to build that house tomorrow, I mean, sure. I'll try. But yeah, but committing and like I, I heard something else today too. It was like a you know one of these inspirational videos on social media where mm -hmm. you know if you start something, finish it. That's the biggest crock of shit I have ever heard. Right. I, you know what? Because I've actually talked about this on on past shows with people. If you start something but it's terrible, yeah. if just you just unstart it or yeah, just don't don't, don't finish do it. it. Move on. Do right. something else. Um, if it has to get done, and you're talking about like going to the doctors because you're bleeding out, then you should probably go to the doctors. Right. But for like, <laughs> there are a lot of people who don't. <laughs> right. There are a lot of people who don't. Funny stories about that. So so just to sum this up, uh, so I, I I'm not sure that my sharing of how I deal with time management necessarily is gonna uh, help the listener or help any listeners, or even help you, Justin. But I think taking time, if we can, to think about 
things like time management and, and how we actually get through the systems of our day, I think that that does actually help us. Huh. So what do you think? I think that's great. Uh, one of my biggest pieces of advice for any kind of problem solving at all, mm -hmm. anything, is get a mentor. So here's two people talking. You said that to me a lot in the past. I say that a lot about that. everything. Yeah. Because, you know, here's two people that are relatively successful in accomplishing a lot of things sure. and tasks, right? Yeah. And we have two completely different ways of doing it. And yet, yeah. th neither one is wrong. No. Right? So for the for for somebody that's listening that, that wants to accomplish more, I mean, like my mentor, I don't, I cannot comprehend how he gets done what he gets done. Yeah, it, it's just it's unbelievable. So following him and just kind of mimicking that person really helps me a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's that's been a big I th thing. So get I a think mentor. I have several mentors. Correct. And and you should. Well, uh, you should, but. because usually someone who's an expert or someone I I, I really acknowledge as great at something is usually terrible at other things. Yep. <laughs> so no, I've got different mentors for all kinds of different things. Yeah. But taking that time to really try to spend to to honor your time, to yeah. actually schedule enjoying life. And may I say value your time? Sure. You know yeah. what I mean? It, whether it's a monetary value or an emotional value, value your time. Yep. There and, are so many times, because we've talked about that in the past, valuing your time. What is your time worth? Yep. And there are so many times that you, you've come to my mind, or I have thought of other folks that say similar things, whereas when I'm waiting for somebody who's 15 minutes late to something, or, and, 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 or I find it's obvious that um, their time is more valuable to them than my time is valuable to mm. them. And... Yeah, because, you know, any time that I could be spending with my family, right. I, I want to do that. In terms of business, that perspective shift of valuing my time and actually putting a number on how much my working hour is worth changed yeah. a lot of things And there are websites me. that you can actually fill out forms to tell you, you know, what's worth doing. Hmm. So there's a certain amount of money that you can make an hour that is worth it if it, if you see a five dollar bill on the ground if it's worth actually stopping right. and bending over and picking up that five dollar bill. Yeah, I would love to have that kind of problem someday <laughs> in the future, but maybe not because uh, you know a wide sage once did say mo money mo problems. So Truth. so that was also stated in another great book in the subtle art of not giving a fuck. <laughs> have you read this? No, it's like an American version of Buddhism, and it has the word fuck in it more times than I've ever heard. Oh wow, I love it. Huh. Um, but he talks about the solution of any problem presents more problems. So more money, more problems. He says Warren yeah. Buffett has money problems. He just has good money problems. Sure. You know, but we I, all have problems. I happen to love problems. I work in a field that, you know, is dedicated to people sorting and dealing with problems. And right. problems are a good thing because when you don't have anything that you're working on, who wants to live that kind of life? That's right. just too boring for me. So, um, so Justin, thank you for coming on. I'd love to have you again uh, on the show where we can talk more in depth about things that you're passionate about. Um, and if you have any questions for me or questions for Justin, you can email me, nick at nami-cv.org, or you can comment on this show, or you can actually comment also on our Facebook and thank you for listening. Thank you, Justin, for joining. Yeah, thanks for having me. And take care of yourself and take care of each other because we all know that survival is so much more than just staying alive. This has been a North Volume Network podcast, the only podcast network in the North Country. Check out our full lineup on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or northvolume.com.